please. My advice for me to you. <laughs> Get a Ghanaian friend. I'll go for it. I'll go for it. And I did. But they allowed you to. Yes, let me share this. In Ghana, I was not the only one that got the scholarship. We had about five uh, applicants in Accra. You know, uh, Conti boys and the other ones that I don't know what they are doing, Sha. You know, initially I thought, okay, maybe it's like a cult skinny coffee cup, but I know what I did. Nothing, nothing. It's just a group of boys being boys. And then later on, the pastor came and said, oh, unfortunately or sadly these people have turned down or declined the scholarship there are four of them five of five them. of them so you were the sixth person so the five of them turned it down and that was because i think yeah they were not bold enough yeah. oh my goodness the international airport is gorgeous <laughs> hello guys and welcome back to another video i appreciate you all for tuning in to see this one that is if you're returning if you're new welcome my name is lillian and i hope that you will hit the subscription button and you will turn on the bell notification so that anytime i upload a new video you will get notified please like this video for me i wanted to do like because the other time i posted a video about foreign students in ghana precisely students from my country schooling in ghana in that video some nigerians shared their own reason why a lot of nigerians choose to school in ghana than back home in nigeria apart from the jam issue and all of that so they talked about why a lot of nigerians are in ghana schooling and i saw some comment at the comment section of that video asking do nigerians have foreign students and i'm like okay good question why not take a look and see if nigeria do have foreign students okay so today we are going to take a look at nigerians schooling in ghana and their experiences and ghanaian schooling in nigeria or that schooled in nigeria also sharing their experience and we are going to just leave it like that it has nothing to do with comparison but but what is wrong with comparison there's nothing wrong right if people compare you to another girl ah, yes she fine pass you or you find person but it does not make you less of a human maybe you just need to work on yourself or something who am i to judge this you guys let's watch the video together and i'm starting with now let's start with a nigerian schooling in ghana or the school in ghana i mean let's do that yeah after we've seen her share her experience we are going to go back and take a look at her life after school a k w a a b a literally everywhere and i remember the first time i got in i was like i was asking my friend like what's that cover what's a cover what's a cover what's what's this it was like oh it's their way of saying welcome in tree and i was like oh okay that's nice and the airport was literally like Morita Mohammed Airport or Motala Mohammed Airport. It wasn't anything fancy or anything serious per se. But now, you guys, it's so beautiful. Oh my goodness. The International Airport is gorgeous. So since I schooled in Kenya University, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, it's a mouthful. I know. So when you get to Accra, the next thing you start hearing is, oh, VIP happy station. <laughs> the station. Once you tell them you're going to Kumasi, the first thing they were, like, oh, are you going through a, a bus? And I was like, a bus? Yeah, English is way different from our Niger English per se. So a lot of things like bus, station, communication, uncle. So <sighs> it's a lot. <laughs> and then you get to VIP station, and then you have to buy a ticket. Tickets. You have to buy a ticket. A ticket. Hi, it will go in. I wasn't really a fan of the local flights because they're usually very small. I have a phobia for small planes, so I just rather use VIP and go to Kumasi than use, you know. When I got when I got to VIP station, I was like, okay, this journey will not be long. My sister and my brother. It took three hours, 30 minutes thereabouts, or was it four hours to get to Tech Junction? Because that's like the central area where you get when taxi I to school. I literally heard that people were charged 100 Ghana cities from Tech Junction to Brunei. Brunei, as in Brunei, that you can walk. They don't run up streets. This one, you see these taxis in Ghana, eh? you see the taxi drivers. Eh? 
they must run your streets in Ghana. It's a natural thing. Take it. The good thing is that the street they are running you is money they want to collect from you. It's not like they are going to kidnap you or do you bad. But you see that street, they must want to run you. Because they know you don't know where you are going. So that one there, I agree. It's true. Let's continue. So getting into school, acclimatizing, socializing. I would say the best advice I ever got was from my cousin. She told me, make friends with the Ghanaians. And I believe that's the best thing you'll ever do. Like, why would you even go to a country and not want to socialize with the people who live there? Like, does it make any sense? And for me, it was a really good... I wouldn't say I avoided Nigerians, but I was living with Nigerians. It's only normal that when you go out there, you socialize with, with Ghanaians. So I feel like the best... And I got a lot of good deals, like things I would have bought for certain prizes. Because my friend Sandra was there with me. She would not speak, Pacho, eh. Well, on that, I cannot relate. Though I'm not a student in Ghana, I've never schooled here. But on that price something, I can't relate. Except, of course, taxi driver. Mm. But when it comes to prices in the market, I have not had to deal with that. In fact, I use my English to buy everything up to date at the local market. And I buy, I buy it at the same rate that a Ghanaian will buy for. This particular thing, I can't relate, though I've heard so many people talk about it. But it hasn't happened to me. <laughs> I don't know why. Get it in our Ghanaian price. So please, my advice for me to you. <laughs> Get a Ghanaian friend. Another thing would be like, you know, Conti boys and the other ones that I don't know what they are doing, sure. You know, initially I thought, okay, maybe it's like a cult skinny coffee cup, but I know what I did. Nothing, nothing. It's just a group of boys being boys. And so, I really enjoyed the fact that I wasn't scared of going to school or scared of working on the streets that courtists would come and slash my neck or because I'm wearing a certain kind of outfit or a certain color of outfits while I would be. So it was really good for me. It was really good for me because I was like, no courtists in, you're chill, we're good, we're good, we're good. So the Ghanaians in general, Ghanaians. So if we're going to be honest with ourselves, the first thing I noticed was like, ah, ah Ghanaian women, okay. Honestly, they have really beautiful natural hair. Like, and then the ones that actually take care of their hair, they have really, really long hair. Like, their hair is really long. And for those who keep natural hair, like their hair is full and healthy and and you can see the melanin through the black hair. Young women are really, really beautiful. But I think maybe because I stayed in Kumasi, I met a lot of dark skinned people. So I noticed that a lot of them were like, a lot of Ghanaians are really dark. And so when people like myself go to the market, they're always like, ah, oh, Bronnie, oh, Bronnie. Yo, the first time they called me, that was like, are y'all trying to call me something? I usually have to call me a name that I don't like. And then my friend Sandra, Sandra interpreted when she's like, oh, O'Brenny means somebody that's light skin. I was like, oh, God. That's all right. One thing I'll say I observed in Ghana is the fact that you have your peace of mind. The silence. Do you, do you know how priceless it is to have a quiet environment? Because God lives in Ghana. Have you watched that video, by the way? Have you seen that video of mine? God lives in Ghana. Let's continue. This girl is so cute. Ah. Especially in the night. You don't have to worry about somebody's generator from I pass my neighbor to I pass my landlord to I pass my fellow tenants to, to any form of generator like you guys like the silence is priceless and the fact that there's almost always constant light is like it's, it was always a bummer for me coming back to Nigeria and experiencing the whole power situation from trips you know so when it comes to food hmm I'm very if, if you know me I'm very 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 picky with food I don't I don't have to eat nonsense I don't know how to eat bad food and tell you thank you so for food I would say the ones I really enjoyed and allowed myself to eat 
first of all i love wache wache is amazing i tried banku let's just say i would not say anything about it so we had a lot of banku is soured i'll help her say it banku is soured and to a lot of foreigners trying to try banku it reminds you of a bar and that is like you eating a bar with sauce i mean with tomato sauce or something so i understand fine girl mm? but she's this girl fine and so honest nigerian restaurants around so I, I i had my nigerian food regardless so there wasn't like much of a room to explore because i said in kumasi almost every saturday was burial like i don't know i was like yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Burial, they call it burials. Is it burials or funerals? Funerals <laughs> like Kumasi is like the center of funerals. The crazy part is that the first I came to Ghana, I saw a group of women wearing white, 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 and I was like, What is happening? Anybody that went to Ghana knows to buy kente, dashiki, or kente something, something that has something inside. In terms of music, I love. A lot of their worship songs are quite intense. Like it's, I don't know if I could play like a track or something to like explain what I'm trying to say. It's only like a few people like Joe Metal. Yeah, I like Joe Metal's songs. And then before I even got to Ghana, I was already obsessed with Sakodie. But I met Jesus in Ghana, so I had to throw Sakodie away. So guys, we've come to the end of this video. Now let's take a look at her life now how does she look like now she's done with schooling in ghana she has gone back home to her country let's take a look at her life personally you will tend to see results with this in three days using that externally is like double bazooka hey gracelines welcome back to the channel my name is grace and my channel is gracelines if you're tuning for the first time you are welcome and if you're returning subscriber hey girl i see you these are the ones that went to the um, private school you may have seen like in one of the videos i did on the nigerian school they are well trained they are well dressed she didn't go to one of those government schools where you see dilapidated structures she went to a private school where they taught her life and respect all right just in case you're wondering like wow this is one this one is so exceptional now the reason be that you can see she's so honest and calm and beautiful yeah she's beautiful she's doing amazing she's doing fine she's well brought up once those ras ones that you see they will come down look down on you they, they are the one that went to those dilapidated structures you know it took me a long time to be able to get a video or video of a Ghanaian that have schooled in nigeria or that's that is schooling in nigeria i struggled so i had to fall back on my friend's video be fair she her channel happened to be the only place i could find a Ghanaian that have schooled in, in nigeria before let's hear our experience most of the times that you've seen guests on my channel especially nigerians they will always tell you they schooled in ghana interestingly today i am bringing in someone very special the reverse is the case in this scenario yes she's schooled in nigeria it was very fascinating for me it was very intriguing when i heard her story i was like <laughs> my people need to know about this my people need to hear her speak and share her experiences with us because i'm sure by now you guys are even tired of hearing nigerians experience in ghana schooling in ghana now let's hear a ghanaian experience schooling in nigeria hello guys welcome to the first space a pleasure please please tell us your name let's start from there please introduce yourself tell us your name where you come from in ghana yeah excellent thank you for that officially my name is uh, esther equia george that's what is on paper but my pet name or uh my nickname or my tagline is princess equia i'm an ashanti so i'm from the ashanti region i hail from a small community mm -hmm. known as asokori mampon so i i watched your video uh -huh. somewhere okay and interestingly i heard you schooled in nigeria mm -hmm. and that got my attention you weren't born in nigeria right no. you were born in ghana mm -hmm. what about your secondary education in Ghana, in Ghana. Yeah. so so tell us about it what took you to Nigeria I got an opportunity which was a scholarship 
via the David Oyedepo Foundation is uh, funded by the Winners International Church of Family by Bishop David Oyedepo. Okay. So that's why the name of the scholarship is David Oyedepo Foundation. Foundation. I was churching with uh, Winners Chapel in Kumasi. The pastor was like, uh, Princess, here is an opportunity. I know you're a good scholar. Why don't you take advantage of it? Just apply. At first I was skeptical, but you know, mm -hmm. I decided to give it a try. Taking that bold step has uh, led me to greater height or has launched me into greater height and greater opportunities. Okay. Well, so I gained admission in 2014. And if you all remember Nigerians and even some Ghanaians, if those that follow up with news and all, mm. that was when the cases of Boko Haram and all okay. were so pronounced in Nigeria. And when I got the scholarship, I had a mixed feeling because apart from Boko Haram, there was also this perception of Nigeria, Nigeria, that painting, that black painting, Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Nigeria is a strange spot. Nigeria. Nigeria? One thing which is negative about Nigerians, like you can never trust them 100%. Nigerians. Nigeria. 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 The mixed feeling was one I was excited because the scholarship cut across West Africa. You must okay. be an African. I know people from other participants or candidates applied and I was opportune, I was fortunate to get that scholarship. So I'm like, Ooh, you are a genius. The <laughs> celebration. I remembered we had a family a family meeting hey. on this. <laughs> and the question was Princess. We had a meeting and hey, the question was, Nana, you sure you want to go to Nigeria? I said, mm. yes. I was not the only one that got the scholarship. Then I was in Kumasi, now I'm in Accra. I was the only one that got the scholarship in Kumasi. We had about five uh, applicants in Accra okay. who also got the scholarship. And that morning, I got into Accra very early. And I was taken to the church. We were waiting on these guys. And then later on, the pastor came and said, oh, Unfortunately, or sadly, these people have turned down or declined the scholarship. There are four of them. Five of five them. Five of them. So you were the sixth person. So the five of them turned it down. And that was because I think, yeah, they were not bold enough. Yeah. The fear was there. And that morning... How did you feel about that? That morning, I was, then I asked myself again, Epia, do you want to, do you want to embark on this journey? <laughs> oh, but wow. I took the bold step. Now tell me, when you entered Nigeria, First of all, you had the perception about Nigeria, Boko Haram. So what was your first impression when you entered Nigeria? She came late. There was no time to book, like, you know, fast flights. You know, you need to book your flight ahead, ahead before you go. And then we thought, okay, what was the fastest route? You have to go by road. What was it? Excellent. Having to cross through different countries. countries west african countries it was it was you know yeah inspiring interest and me i'm an adventurous person i think okay. the school sent a bus from Quara to come they, pick they kept you calling where were you where were you and then where is it located omaro Quara state Quara. yes when you get to my school you think you are in the western world i mean this oh, is wow. not this is normal I'm not here to sugarcoat my school. That's my alma mater. I will okay. buy it. I'm proud. Okay. I know you can never be the same. The Nigerian girl, when she dropped at the Kotoka airport, she was taken to VIP station at Seko. From there, she took a bus or bus to Kumasi on the road. But her Ghanaian sister, the school was calling to check up on her. Her godfather, everybody was calling to check up like a, a treasure. This is just like when, when they are taking money from a central bank to a local bank or from a local bank to a central bank. It's, it's like a case of a bolu van, you know, kind of thing. This uh, Ghanaian sister, you know, she was being caught, checked up on, you know, to know what is happening. I hope you are okay. And if you go further into the video, which I'm going to leave the link in the description of this video, if you want to see her full interview, her experience in Nigeria, you can head straight to Bife Space to complete the video. She talked about them being restricted, not being allowed to leave the school premises. And these are the things we need to work on for you to be able to achieve education or health 
tourism the security has to be put in place of course convenance university is a private university i mean a um, landmark university is a private university you can see how beautiful it is it is a private one mm, some of the public ones are not looking bad but we can do better for a country like nigeria so this will answer you i i don't know for me this is the only video i could find certainly i know for sure there are Ghanaians that have schooled in nigeria before but maybe back in the days when nigeria was semi-normal unlike where it is now where you don't scatter like all the tire don't bust do you understand so i'm not discouraging you if you want to school in, in nigeria okay but as a Ghanaian, i don't think it will be more cheaper for you than it will be for you in your country because what you're paying here as a local student in a uni in ghana you're definitely going to pay more if you're to school in nigeria do you understand but it's still good for the experience why not go try it give it a try go to cities like maybe abuja or lagos or why not go go to the east if you want or you go to my state university of calabar just anywhere you want mm? give it a try why not i'm not discouraging you you wear the boat now and decide decide which you would rather do the truth is nigerians are friendly i will not sit down here and lie nigerians are very friendly and if I were you, the best way to travel and keep safe in Nigeria is by not announcing it. No matter how much you trust somebody, except your mother. For me, I don't believe in telling people I'm I'm coming to Nigeria. I'm I'm I'm, I'm moving around. Tell less, okay? That way you can go to Nigeria smoothly and come back without any problem. But of course, you have people that are friendly. They are willing to look out for you. But at the same time, as I've always spoken up here about people's interests and how it could change with time what about if that friendly person of yours you and i fall out and all that these things do you understand things can happen there are people you fall out with they will just leave it like that but there are people you fall out with they want to make your life miserable do you understand nigerians are friendly nigeria is a good place to visit but with a lot of caution all right because as a nigerian i do so and i do so with plenty of caution and a lot of prayer I pray in Ghana, but in Nigeria, I pray harder. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Doo -doo.